You want to get your PQ8 game on itch.io and I will show you how. Itch.io or itch.io is a very popular place to put PQ8 games on. There's multiple reasons for this. It is a very open platform, a very simple way to create a place for your game to live on, to create like a website for your game basically. It's an easy way to start monetizing your game, selling the game on IPs, accepting donations. And more important for a lot of people, it is also a place where a lot of game jams take place. So if you want to submit your game to a game jam, usually you have to create an itch.io page. Before we get on itch.io though, we have to do some prep work. So I have created a little demo project here. Uh, this is an empty PQ8 directory, it's just my game, called mygame.p8. I'm gonna load my game. As you can see, this is basically a, a remix of my breakout tutorial game, which you can check out uh, in my breakout tutorial series. That's how it works. All right, in order to get our game on itch.io, we have to export it. And we do this with the export function. If you type in export, you see a bunch of ways of in which you can export stuff from your game. We are interested in HTML, HTML5, and we are also interested in bin, in binary files like exes. One little problem though, if we actually use this function, my game dot bin exporting this, there is an error message saying that no icon was found, please capture a label image. Um, well, basically our game is missing a label image, so we have to create one. Uh, I will now explain how to create a label image. If you already know how this works, then uh, you can skip this section. Okay, Pico 8 cards are kind of like pretending to be cards of a console. And one feature of cards of consoles is that they have little images on them, little labels that kind of tease what kind of game is on that card. And so before publishing uh, PQ8 projects, we have to create those images for our PQ8 projects as well. This sounds more complicated than it really is. All we need to do is really just run the game. And whenever there is something interesting on the screen that we think might uh, make a good uh, card image, we just press F7. And there it is, we captured the card image. The title screen is a good candidate for that, but a good alternative is also showing uh, a bit of gameplay so people know what it is, what kind of game it is. Afterwards, all we need to really do is to save, and we have saved our card image. Card images are used in a variety of situations. One place where they pop up is in the background uh, when you browse through cards on Splore. And if you do, you sometimes notice that some of the cards have actually pretty elaborate uh, images that actually maybe are not really popping up anywhere in the game. They seem to be uh, additional content. That's a bit of a trick that is a little bit outside of the scope of this little short tutorial, but I will post down in a doobly-doo a link to a, a post on lexlove.com explaining how to get your own graphics into the card image. All right, so now that we have a label image, we can actually start exporting our game. So first of all, I'm going to go export mygame.html. It has exported my game into uh, mygame.js and mygame.html. We're gonna go into details on what that is in a second. First, I wanna also go through a second export. Export mygame.bin. And it created a whole bunch of files. We're gonna look at those right now. All right, so this is my PQ8 folder. You can see my original mygame.p8, but you can see now also the exported files, which is these three things. mygame.html and mygame.js. These are part of the HTML5 export. These two files are the HTML5 export. Also, we have this folder here that, that PQ8 created for us, which is really nice. This is a folder that contains uh, binaries, uh, which is executable files for four different operating systems, Windows, Raspberry Pi, OS X, and Linux. These co will come in handy when we actually upload, you know, uh, downloadable files to itch.io. Uh, you can see like, uh, for example, Windows, I can open this up and it will contain the exe file that will actually launch my game. But let's talk a little bit uh, about the HTML5 export. There's one little tweak that I want to do, or two little tweaks that I want to do. The HTML file is called mygame.html. I want to change this into index.html. That's because most websites expect the HTML file to be called like this, index.html and not something something.html. I will also create a zip file. So I will just here create a zip and I will call this mygame.zip. And now I will put both of the files, index.html and mygame.js. I will copy them 
into the zip folder. And if I open this up, you can see them. They're both in here, index.html and mygame.js. We're not done with prep work yet. There's two steps that I want to also go through. One is I want to create a bunch of screenshots so I can um, decorate the website that we upload stuff into. And we can do this directly from uh, the game itself. So the same way we're capturing the uh, card image, we can also do screenshots and record GIFs. By pressing F6, we make a screenshot. And by pressing F10, uh, no, actually F9, we um, save an uh, animated GIF of the last eight seconds to the desktop. Uh, so I want to pick a, a couple of places from the game to record as GIFs and as screenshots. Uh, I want to pick um, things that look different, that show different places in the game. So the title screen would be a good choice. I also want to maybe pick something from the actual game. And then maybe also I want to show some kind of end screen, some kind of game over or uh, congratulations screen, just to show a progress from the title screen, playing the game, and then where the game is going. All those GIFs and screenshots end up on a desktop. So what I want to do is to give them some folders for them to live in. But we're not quite done with the prep work yet. There is also one important step that we have to do. Uh, we have to create a cover image. So on itch.io, there is um, um, this idea of a cover image, which is like a big graphic that uh, is basically like an icon or a thumbnail for the game. It will get scaled down and you know the little thumbnails on the website um, are taken from the cover image. But I think there's also places where you can see like a bigger version of it. These are the dimensions that itch.io recommends, uh, which is a width of 630 pixels and a height of 500 pixels a bit of a weird resolution but just you know run with it you want to create something that pops something that invites people to click on this screenshots from the game are fine but you will find that on a website when you mouse over over a game it will actually also show the screenshots so this is an opportunity of maybe showing some kind of other type of graphic like a logo or maybe um, you know character from the game something that will add additional information to the already visible screenshots all right i will save this as a png image okay so this is the result of my prep work I have my actual game as an HTML export in a zip file. If I open this again, there's index.html and mygame.js in there. I have also a bunch of stuff that is basically helping us communicate the game to uh, our audience. That is going to be the uh, cover image, the thumbnail, uh, but also a bunch of screenshots and GIFs that will help us structure our post. I have also the binary files, you know, the um, the files that will execute on the different uh, systems. So like OS X, R Raspberry Pi, Windows and Linux. Uh, I have copied them from our .bin folder on here. And with that, on to itch.io. All right, so we are on itch.io and um, something that you have to do is you have to create an account. It's a very quick process. I already did this and I'm not going to step you through that process because I think you you will be fine. It's not the difficult thing. You've been on the internet before, right? So what you want to do here is you want to go on to the dashboard and in the dashboard, there is a big, huge button, create a new project. That's what we want to do. And this gives us this huge form. This will allow us to control what the game will be. And we have to type in all this information in order for each you to understand what this game is all about. So first of all, we are going to have to give it a title. This will populate this project URL here with some text. I think you can, you can still change it if you want to have like a custom, custom URL for your project. This is our cover image box. And we're going to click on that. And we are going to... Uh, take the my game from the desktop and put it in there. Something that you can do here, and that might be a good idea for bigger projects, especially projects that are downloadable only and don't don't play in your browser. You can actually specify a YouTube video that will show you a small trailer or a, a gameplay preview. This is a very useful feature that you should not ignore. Here's a tagline, a short blurb. I think it shows up on various places in the website. Again, we should some, put something in here. Now comes uh, some more interesting questions here. So um, first we have to also just specify what kind of thing it is. There's, it can be a lot of things. Usually it's gonna be games, but you can also see that you can upload also um, game assets or soundtracks or tools or even comics up on here. This is really useful. Then we have to specify what kind of project this is. Um, so downloadable means that it's just a file that you download from the web. Um, but there's also other options here as well. Something that we are interested in here is HTML, which means we are wanting to upload kind of like a website and that website should show up on this website. It's a website in a website. <laughs> and you can also specify, you know, how finished this project is. Uh, something I missed here is you can add screenshots in here and that's also something we're gonna do. I want to upload three GIFs.
as you can see, you can even um, change the order in which they show up. So maybe the GIF here with the uh, start screen, that will be up here. And then this one that is going to be the end. Oops, we're not going to delete it. We move it down here. So there's like a natural order to the to those GIFs. Here's the part we have to think about the monetization. We have to specify how and if people are able to give us money. Uh, if you don't want to have any money involved, you just set no payments and it will just turn off any kind of monetization. Uh, but it might be a good idea to just set it to zero or donate, which means that uh, all of the files will be available freely, but people will um, be allowed to give you money if they want to, if you want to support the project. Also, you can set it to paid um, so that if they want to download the project, they will have to type in something. Uh, something you cannot do is to set it so that people have to pay in order to play the game in the browser. If you upload it uh, for it to be available in the browser, it will always be free. And the paid part only applies to the files that are available for download. I'm going to set it to zero and donate. I think that's a safe place to go. All right, so now we're getting into the part that's really interesting. This is where we're actually going to upload our game. We're going to click on this Upload Files button. And we're going to select mygame.zip. That's the zip file that contains the HTML file and uh, the JS file. And as you can see, uh, after it's uploaded, I can I have some options to kind of like specify what this file is supposed to do. Uh, in our case, we're going to set say that this file will be played in a browser. That's the file that will be displayed in uh, on the top of the website as you know as as the game that is playable in the browser. Uh, but uh, after we uploaded the game, we also can upload some other files, and that's something we're going to do as well. I'm going to upload the different versions of the game, so the Windows version, the uh, Linux version, the OS X version, the Raspberry Pi version. And for each version, I want to specify what operating system this is for. So this is for Windows, this is for Linux, this is for Apple. Uh, and I'm not sure how to specify Raspberry Pi. I'm just going to keep it like this. Okay, this is now the important part here for um, the way the website looks. And this is embed options, which is kind of like we have to specify how big the window is uh, for our game um, that the game is played in, in the browser. Um, there's some default values, but these are not good. So we're going to change these to uh, 950 width and 650 height. That's some numbers that I de derived experimentally and you can try some your own uh, numbers here. I'm not married to those numbers. Uh, there's some other options here. A mobile friendly will specify if the um, if the website should switch in a different mode when you uh, 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 bring it up on the on the cell phone and uh, because Pico 8 games play on cell phones you want to do that. Automatically start uh, on page load. Uh, I'm going to say yes, because the Pico 8 also has a button that you press to, to start it. So um, that's okay. And the other ones uh, you can leave out. Now, this is a very important uh, part, and uh, we're going to talk about this later. This is actually the description of your game. And again, that's something that's a whole new kind of forms that we're going to discuss in a second here. Uh, but first, I want to also specify what kind of genre this is. In our case, this is going to be uh, action. Is there a Kate here? No, it's, I'm just going to say action. Now, this is also an important part, and that's also a bit of a uh, <laughs> rabbit hole. But you, uh, there's some tags on this website, and you want to specify some tags. There's a maximum of a number of 10, and you probably also want to like put all of the ta tags that you can. Picking the right tag can be a bit difficult. And for now, I'm going to just going to, going to put in arcade, and we're going to talk about picking the right tag uh, afterwards. There's custom noun here, but I'm not really interested in that um, much more. Um, you can also link this to a Steam page and some other pages here, but again, that's not something I'm really interested in. Uh, if there's some kind of special instructions to install the game and so forth, you can put them in here. Uh, but I think uh, for us, it's not really that necessary. And at the bottom here, we have some very important decisions. At, uh, we have to decide whether uh, we want to allow any comments to be posted. Uh, alternatively, we can also uh, create like a whole discussion board down in the, on the bottom of the page where people, people can ask questions and respond to each other's posts, or you can just disable any kind of community interaction. I think comments is good for most cases. And down here in the visibility access, that's actually where you release the game. Uh, you will set it to public if you want the game to actually appear on the website. I'm going to set it to draft for now because there's still work that we have to do. I'm going to click save and view page. 
uh, we got a like a little message here and this is our game this is the website of our game you can see the little test that i wrote here this is the actual game playable in a browser and these are the files that you can download and if i click on here you will see the game will actually play in a browser as well sweet all right the light has changed and i have a new set of clothes because it gets serious now at this point we are technically Technically, we are finished and we could publish this game. All you really need to do is you go here, uh, up here on Edit Game. This will take you back to this website that we already just filled in. And all the way down here, you can now, because now it has been saved, now you can uh, check this box published and you can save and the game will be published to the public. That's why it's called published. <laughs> there might be situations where this is actually a good idea. If you are, you know, if you want to submit your game to a jam and you've been cutting it close and the jam is almost finished, then it might be a good idea to just, you know, publish the bare minimum and uh, get your game into the jam and then take care of the details afterwards. But at this point, and that's maybe the more serious close, I want to make a plea. Please, please, please don't let your game hanging. What I see is a lot of people will create like a bare minimum itchio website and then, you know, there's something like very similar to this and then they publish this and that's it. In fact, I vividly remember like a course in, in the university where the requirement was to create an itchio website and a lot of students submitted something that is very similar to this. I think in industry newcomers, there's this understanding or this idea that if the game is awesome, if it's really good, then you don't really actually have to do anything else that the game itself will attract people. I mean, it's not... a uh, crazy idea to think about. I mean, the game is right here. You just have to click on play and you will play the game, right? What else is there to say? But there is actually a huge step be between just looking at a page and actually engaging with the game, deciding to, yes, I'm going to invest some minutes of my life into figuring this game out. The website is what they're using as a reference point to decide if it's worth spending more time here or not. And it can be a very effective way of measuring this because we make like just snap decisions like, oh, nobody invested any effort into presenting this game. Well, that's probably what the game is going to be too. So what I want you to do, I want you to put as much effort and as much love into the website that the game is embedded in as you've put into the game. The website should reflect how the game is. Don't leave your game hanging. So let's go back and uh, change some things. We go back to edit game. This is the website that we just filled in. And there's some things that we haven't dealt with and I want to deal with this right now. And the most important part is this part here. That's the detail box where you write a description of your game. It's a good idea to write a very elaborate and very user-friendly description of your game. If people see that there's a lot to say about your game, they will be more interested in finding out what the details are. So I have a little copy and paste template here that will help us structure our post. There are four important paragraphs that I want you to focus on. First part, and that is very important for itch.io, is the controls. So something you have to consider is that people who go on itch.io and play your game, most of them will probably never heard about Pico 8. They don't know how Pico 8 works. They don't know what buttons do what. They don't even know if Pico 8 is something that's controlled with a mouse or with buttons. In fact, that was actually something I was struggling with myself when I uploaded My Chance with Buns. Uh, I got a lot of people actually from you know, people who I'm actually personally known who said like, well, I tried to click on something with my mouse and it just didn't do anything. I guess my computer was broken. <laughs> so that's why I make sure the top thing I talk about in the description, the thing that is most prominent and the highest has the highest priority, that that thing is an explanation of what buttons to press to do something. Moving on to the rules. Now, if people already know the keyboard controls, they can press some buttons and maybe can launch the game and maybe they figure it out on their own. They figure out what the rules are on their own. But it's still a good idea to spell out the rules in great detail. So if there is any kind of like uncertainty how the game exactly works, and that there is going to be a place, a reference to look up all the details. I think this is also generally a good place for people who just scrolling through the page and are trying to figure out if it's, this is something for them or not. The rules are always a good place to see like, ah, okay, how does the game work? Is this something I want to get into? The rules will actually quite often sell the game for people. The third paragraph is all about behind the scenes content. This is not quite as important on itch.io. There's still a lot of developers hanging out on itch.io. This is quite a developer heavy website. But it's not quite as important as, for example, the Pico 8 BBS. But it still might be an interesting thing to uh, add some details about how this game was created. Maybe um, there is like some making of video or maybe there's some behind the scene details. Um, it would be nice to write something about, you know, in which context the game was created. 
And then finally, so easily forgotten, um, just put in credits. Where can people reach you? What kind of people work on this project? How can you reach those people? Now, while we're here, while we're this, uh, using this, this little box, notice that there's lots of uh, tools that we have to actually structure our post. And um, this description here will be actually, is actually part of the web design, basically, of our web page. And there's a lot of tricks that we can pull off. For example, note that we can add images uh, to the actual post. So we have the screenshots here, by the way. We haven't seen them on our web page. We're going to deal with that in a second. So, But we have those screenshots that you uploaded here. But you can still upload more screenshots in the actual post. You can uh, upload, like, um, something I saw a lot is uploading... Um, diagrams that explain how the game works and the rules to kind of like um, spice things up to just not make it like a block of text that people go through, but actually something that's more visual, more visual experience, something that gives them an idea what the game about is about without having to read every single sentence. Um, we're not going to do a lot at this point. We're just going to uh, actually select the different headlines and we are going to actually change them to heading one. It looks gigantic at this point, but uh, it's always uh, important to watch this on an actual website later on. You will see they will be much smaller. I want to make, be very clear about this. I'm using copy and pasted uh, bogus text. This is a lorem ipsum, kind of like a placeholder text that a lot of web designers are using. Uh, of course, you have to fill in the actual information yourself. Okay, uh, we talked about this previously. There's tags here, and that's something that's also quite quite important. As I already said, you have 10 tags, uh, so uh, you should put 10 tags in here. Uh, what kind of tags are good tags? Well, on the main page, you see here a link called Browse All Tags. We're going to click on that. And it gives you actually a list of all of the tags that are available. And there's some really good information here. So we get a, an amount of projects that are tagged with this tag. And you can see how many new projects are being posted every week. So you see some insanely popular tags. For example, 2D is an insanely popular tag. But you also see some tags that are not quite as popular. For example, Railroad only has 59 projects. So the trade-off that you're looking for is do you want to be part of a really, really big tag that has, you know, thousands of entries where maybe a lot of people are looking for that search term? Or maybe a good choice would be to pick a less popular tag where there is not a lot of projects tagged in this category where it's going to be more easier for your game to rise to the top. It's a bit difficult to make these decisions because we don't really actually see how many people are browsing those different tags. So uh, this might be a bit tricky. But still, I think just clicking through this and, and browsing through all the tags and seeing what tags are available might give you good ideas of which tags are the right one for your projects. So we have Arcade, Pico 8, Breakout, Retro, 8-bit, Single Player, Chiptune, Tennis, Colorful, and Short. All right, so we provided a lot more information about the game. Let's start actually designing the actual website. Uh, we're going to save and click on View Page. Off the bat, this is a lot more substantial now, but we can do even better. So here is a hidden thing that many people might not be aware of. If you click on this button here with a, with a brush called Edit Theme, here we have a whole huge panel of options that give you even more possibilities to kind of customize your website. Most of those will be about colors and uh, fonts, but there's also very important layout decisions to be made here. So first up, I actually want to bring out in the layout section here, I want to bring out the screenshots here. I want to set them to sidebar. And this actually brings out the screenshots that we uploaded earlier. And you can see off the bat, this website looks a lot more lively now. Now, there's something not quite right about the screenshots, and that's something that's a bit of an issue here. Uh, because the screenshots are, uh, the GIFs are relatively small, uh, they don't quite fit the layout here. You can see there's this weird, awkward little gap. Um, I'm not going to fix this. Um, I think it's okay. Uh, but there is ways of fixing this, multiple ways, in fact. The easiest way would be just to upload bigger screenshots to scale those GIFs up to maybe you know, twice the size, and then they get shrunk down so they fit this layout more easily. But we have bigger fish to fry. So uh, you can see here, um, there is, uh, we have, we can change the backgrounds. I'm going to actually fumble around with each one of them so you can see what's happening. So this is the background behind everything, like the, the thing that's, that's, that is behind uh, all of the elements. There's like this um, space here, and that space, you can define the color of that. You can define the color of the actual post. You can see here, this is something that we can also have control over. You can define the color of the actual text. And you can define the color of links in, within the text. So all of the buttons here, you can change the colors of two. If you click here, there's more options here. I can have the headers 
So the captions here, I can have those have different colors than the rest. And I also can have, I think the buttons here, they can also be have their custom color that is different from the colors of the links. You can also have here this little clear button if you don't want to do that. There's also this background alpha, which basically makes the whole website transparent. So this red color that I set to the background comes through. And further down here, we have options for fonts. Now, there is not a lot of, lot of fonts to pick from. There's a serif, sans serif, pixel, anonymous pro, and later. Again, I have a plea here. Please don't use Pixel. This is something that a lot of people are doing uh, and it it's makes kind of sense, I guess, where it's like, oh, I have a PQ8 project and it is a low resolution kind of project. The text in the game is low resolution. So I will also use this weird pixely low resolution font for the website that the game is embedded in. The problem I have with this font is that it is very difficult to read. It's not very good at displaying long paragraphs of text. It's very cumbersome to read it. It makes me not want to read the text. If you really want to use the pixel font, I would suggest switching down to the medium size. This makes the text a lot more readable with this specific font. Generally, and that's why I picked you those weird colors here, something I see with a lot of those websites is that hmm, they end up sacrificing readability quite a lot. Picking the right font and color are not easy decisions, and there's you know professionals who do this for money, right? <laughs> Some people even study it. For somebody who's new and who really wants to get like into this business of presenting things, of creating websites, I think like a good um, guideline is just to focus on things being readable. Something I would suggest, for example, when you're picking uh, fonts, is to just pick a very boring font for the actual text, for the paragraphs, and then use the more crazy and outrageous fonts for uh, the caption. So something like here, since just we're gonna use a regular sans serif font, and here, if you click on more options, you can actually select a different font for the header, and here we could do something crazy, like again, the pixel font maybe, or, and that's something I wanted to also show, you can also here uh, select a Google font. It takes you to this like weird window where it's just a bunch of names and it doesn't actually show you what the fonts look like. That's a bit awkward here. You actually have to go to Google to find out what the fonts look like. So here's actually a link for this. I'm gonna open this in a new tab. And here you can see all of the Google fonts and you can now pick any of those fonts. There's a huge selection of fonts actually available to you and it's just a little bit hidden. I'm gonna pick a new Nito for the uh, headlines. It is a bit of a, not really a crazy font, but it kind of looks nice. It has a bit of a rounded shapes to it and that kind of feels more like um, the thumbnail that we created previously. And again, something I really specifically focus on here is like I chose uh, colors for the text and background that are really bad, that don't really go well together. That's really difficult to read. Uh, and so, yeah, that's something I would also focus. We're gonna fix in a second. We're gonna choose uh, better colors for the text and the background. So they're really nice and readable, but not too unpleasant to look at. I also wanted to show you this part here. This is actually quite important here. Um, here you can select a banner image. That will be an image that will be displayed above the actual game. Let's just test out all of the options so you can see what it does. Let's upload something to the banner. So this is actually the thumbnail that we just created. And as you can see, it was a really big image. And what it did is it moved the game downwards. So now people actually have to scroll in order to play the actual game. So this is a bit of an issue with the banner. You want to have something that is not too tall so it doesn't move the entire website too far down. I'm gonna remove it and I'm gonna try the background now and that will put the text in the background behind the website. And there's also embed BG here. As you can see, I uploaded something here and we don't see anything. Hmm. We're gonna fix that problem in a second. These two uh, functions here, the banner and background, the ability to set uh, images there, are really strong and a very effective way of really breaking out of this um, itch.io format. And we're gonna look at some examples of how we can leverage those to a great effect in a second. For now, I'm just gonna do something very simple here. I'm just gonna upload the banner. I actually prepared something uh, off screen here. I prepared a little logo here. As you can see, it's transparent. So we see the background here. And now we're gonna pick some colors. Um, Let's pick something, maybe something darker for the background, maybe something lighter for the text. Definitely something very dark for the text at this point. Something maybe a little bit reddish even. For the link, I'm gonna actually go back to red. Scrolling down a little bit, like trying to pick a good red for this. Made the background a little brighter. Yeah, that's certainly better. Mm, this was a bit too reddish, this background here. Ah, uh, yeah, that's that's certainly comes together now. Yeah, so with the colors of the text, something to watch out for is, um, you want to have a good contrast, but something also to avoid is having black background and white text. 
uh, because uh, especially modern screens are so bright that you get a bit of a burn in effect. The text starts burning in on your retina. Um, so uh, don't use just pure white and pure black. Uh, either make the text uh, not quite white, just t t turn it down a little bit, or uh, make the background um, not quite black. So something I want to discuss here is there's a bit of an issue, and I see this a lot with different Pico 8 games. There is like this rectangle here on the website that is kind of like a window. And in that window, Itch.io loads in our Pico 8 game, the thing, the zip file that we uploaded, that actually is displayed basically here. The HTML file and the JS file, those are being loaded basically in here. And you have to understand that they have their own colors, they have their own background and so forth. And those are, this, this color here, this dark gray color is controlled by the thing, the HTML file, that we uploaded uh, ourselves. So here from Itch.io, we can't actually change this color. We have to actually go back to uh, the files that we uploaded. But before we do that, there's a bit of a trick, and you know, this is kind of hardcore web design tricks if you haven't heard about that. I'm gonna save here. Now I'm using Chrome. So depending on what kind of browser you are using, the feature might be somewhere else. But if you click here and click on more tools, there's gonna be developer tools. I'm gonna to click on developer tools and it opens up a very scary window here and there's a lot of things happening here. What I want to select is this little button here, this little arrow thing. I'm gonna click on that. And now if I um, move my mouse on the website, I can select different elements. I want to select this element here, this big gray box, not, not something inside here, just the outer one. Click. Now here, is the actual code of the website. Uh, and you can see like, you want to select the tag that, is, that says body style equals. This is the one that we want to, want to be selecting. Now down here, you can actually uh, change the background of this, this part here. So I'm gonna click here and you can see I can change the background. Now this will actually won't get saved on Itch.io. This is just like for us to preview but I just wanna like, you can experiment with different colors. You can see like what works well and what doesn't work well. Uh, let's be see, I think that might be a good, maybe a bit brighter. So I'm gonna copy this text here. That's actually the color of, that's actually the number of the color basically. I'm just gonna copy it out and save it somewhere in a text file so I don't forget it. And now just to make sure, like if I reload the page, right? It will all be gone. It's not safe. This is just something temporarily for us. Now it's up to us to actually make this change happen. Okay, so I'm back here in my Pico 8 folder and you can see here's index.html. This is the part that we actually have to edit. So you can open it with any kind of text editor. I actually do have um, Notepad++ here, which I would recommend, but uh, in a pinch, you know, just a regular text editor works well. So this is just the regular built-in uh, Windows editor. And then you have to just scroll here and there's a bunch of text here. Um, but what we're looking for is the body tag. You can actually look for for this one. We already saw this in uh, when we were inspecting the website. We saw it in Chrome. So let's just look for body. Okay, so here's the body tag that we just saw previously in a Chrome browser when we were inspecting the code of the website. And it has multiple style uh, things associated with it. Uh, this is the background color, and that's the thing that we want to replace. It says 222 here. We're going to paste in the code that we remembered previously, the code that is the color that we want to have in the background of our uh, Pico 8 embed. I wanted to point out something that you can do here. So in, instead of the color, you can also have like basically eight zeros here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This will turn the entire embed entire background of the embed completely transparent. So the website will shine actually through, the Itch.io website will shine through uh, your embed. This might be a good choice if your goal is to um, have maybe some kind of like nice image in the background. As we saw, uh, there was like three images that you could upload to the Itch.io website. One was the banner, uh, then there was the background of the actual website and there was like an embed background and we uploaded something there and it didn't do anything. There's also embed BG here as you can see I uploaded something here and we don't see anything. Hmm. And that's because the embed or the Pico 8 embed had like a gray background. It wasn't transparent, it was opaque. By putting in eight zeros here we will turn the background of the embed transparent and that background image would be able to shine through. But in our case, we actually want to have this specific blue color that we selected. We're gonna save this and we're gonna drag and drop this index into my game.zip and we're gonna replace the old file. Back on Itch.io, we're gonna go back into edit game. We're gonna upload the file. 
As you can see, if you upload actually a file uh, that has the same name as a file that you uploaded previously, it will actually replace the old files. You don't have to actually delete, you know, you can delete files here. You can, don't have to delete the old version. You just upload a new version of the same file. In this case, a new version of the mygate.zip file, and it will automatically replace the already existing file that was up there before. We're gonna save this, we're gonna view the page, and there we go. This is the blue that we selected, now it is here. This is not the most beautiful website in the world, but it is okay. We did like the bare minimum here, but of course this is just the beginning and you can do so much more and probably you should. And a good way to get like get into it and get ideas for what your website could, could be like and, and kind of like expand your horizon of, of what an itch.io website might look like is to actually go through some popular itch.io websites on the, on the front page and to see what other developers are doing with their games. Boyfriend Dungeon is a game that is kind of like pretty hot right now. You can see they have a really nice big banner image with some characters even in there kind of like really catch your eye. They have even like a, um, a bit of a, like a trailer, trailer gif happening here and they have of obviously a lot of screenshots and they have like a little YouTube video here. You can see there's some really nice blurry background in the, in the background of the website. Something I really like is that they added these visual, these, these kind of graphical um, headers for the different paragraphs. And they're being really smart here. Instead of like using fonts or anything, they just like, these are like basically images that they inserted into the actual post. So it looks like, you know, text, but it's actually uh, an image. This is a nice website, but you can still see that it is still essentially the Itch.io layout. It's just really nice images put into the Itch.io layout. You see other games being really creative with um, the Itch.io layout. So this is a Monsters Expeditions, which is, by the way, really, really good game. Um, and you can see an interesting thing happening here. They're using like the banner and the background in conjuncture, or maybe it's just, just the background. I'm not really sure. Uh, anyway, they're using somehow the image that you can upload to kind of create this kind of horizontal element in here. So it really feels like a completely different kind of layout a little bit. They use images a lot here in between. And something I really enjoy is like they have also like this visual separator, this little line here. And that I'm pretty sure is just an image, like a little image of a little fine line here, just to add more structure to the text. Now we have to say this is a bit weird here because these are games that are downloadable only, right? You have to actually click the button here down here uh, to get those games. They are not like the PQ8 games that we uploaded where we have an embed. So it might be also worthwhile looking at how other PQ8 developers are embedding their games on itch.io. So this is Pullfrog and that's one uh, game that really impressed me. So they have a really big banner here. So it does move the entire website a little bit down. But that's okay. The background here is black and they have this really nice background here uh, with these kind of like, I don't know, bubbles. That's something I really appreciate and I think they, they were a bit inspired by also the way I uh, lay out those websites. Um, you can see they start right away their description with this huge image. This is like an image that he created for this, actually two images, uh, with a logo and this huge image um, showing you the keys that you have to press in order to control the game. They are using really big uh, animated GIFs um, they're actually bigger than the standard size for PQ8, so they fill in the entire layout. That's something that we struggled with previously. I really love how here, when they go over to the rules, they have like these special illustrations, kind of like the, those diagrams, uh, that visually explain the rules. So you don't have to read this text, you can just look at diagrams. And down at the bottom, they have the credits section. They don't have a behind the scenes section, but they talk a little bit how the game was created in the credits section. So that's something that you also can do. Now, not everything is perfect. They have, they are using the pixel font as a text, but at least it's a, it's a medium size. So it's not quite as egregious. And I think the images are doing all the talking here and the text is not quite as important. There's not a lot of text in here. There are just individual lines instead of whole paragraphs. The text is white on black. And again, I warned you about this guys. Um, but in this case, they actually toned it down. It's not actually completely white, it's, it's a gray. And so the light bulb effect is reduced, but I still maybe would actually tone it down even more. Uh, especially since the text in the descriptions here is like completely different font than the pixel font. I would actually work on the font here a little bit. But still, it's a beautiful website, a beautiful embed. The entire website really pulls you into the game. It's really part of the game. The actual game becomes an extension of the website. And that's something that I think is worth aspiring to. So yeah, don't leave your game hanging. This is how you upload your game on Itch.io. This video is part of a series where I explain how to publish PQ8 games on various websites. If you like this video, you might also want to check out the two other videos, which is how to publish PQ8 games on the Lex Lofty BBS and on Newgrounds. Otherwise, see you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.